I'm going to throw you for a loop. I don't know about that. Well, this is two homers and a realist. First midweek pod. Are we, re- are we ready? Are you ready? guys ready? Yeah, you ready to rock it. and roll? Absolutely. This is going to be a big one. So this is OU Texas week. We are three days away. This from, week is? I think it is. Hold okay. on. Let's check our calendars. Wait. Let me check my calendar where I'm traveling. Let me see what it says I'm going. It says I'm going to Dallas. Who's we're, going to the game? Are you going to the game? I'm going go. to the game. Connor's going to the game. Right. Steve's uh, going to the game. I'm going to Luke the game. Lucas is going to the game. Jay, hmm. you going to join us at the game? No, I'm <laughs> going to watch it on the We phone. don't miss games. We don't miss games. <laughs> but that's all right. We, we don't miss games. We understand. All right. Well, this is this is the biggest week of the entire football year. This is the greatest rivalry in all of college football. Arguably the greatest rivalry in all of sports. It's up there. Mm. There's some there's some great ones. But I'm I'm not going to split hairs and go down that road. That's maybe another midweek pod. <laughs> Argument podcast off-season for another time, pod. off-season pod. But this is, you got to admit, this is top five, in the top five, for sure, unarguably, in the top five of college football rivalries. I think it's the greatest rivalry. When you look at the pageantry, when you look at the history, how many times these two teams are in the running for something historically. The the 50-50 split in the middle of the Cotton Bowl, halfway between Austin and Norman. During the State Fair. Heaven and Hell. Yeah, during the State Fair. Um, in the evil empire of that, Texas. There's never a given result. Never there's a given never result. Never a given result. <clears throat> there's like Bray Switcher said, last so you checked, stuff. Dallas was in Texas. That's right. Last well, I checked, in fact. It's a genius. <laughs> it's <laughs> a road game. The King. It was his birthday yesterday. Yep. Little little tribute to the King. Like, hey, a little salute to the King. A salute. Cheers Toast up. the King. Cheers, Cheers up. to Coach Switzer. Okay. Well, let's get started with this midweek pod. Jay has a a topic for us. Hit us with this. What do you got, Jay? All right, so for this week's game, there's three choices. You could either A, insert Adrian Peterson. B, in his prime. All in these, his, in, yeah, in, in his, his prime. prime. B, you could have Creed and Trent Williams. Or C, Rocky Kelmus and Roy Williams. What would you go with, A, B, or C? So obviously, if you if you go with the defensive, defensive players, that is... A dynamite defense right there. That's just uh, they're already an exceptionally good defense. That's we need an unbelievable defense. We need linebackers. And how scary is that? If you, it, you with the run support too, not just the safety. One of the greatest run support defenders in the history of the game. Yeah, I think watching Roy Williams come up and meet Bijan in the backfield oh, would be pretty sweet. That would be a grown up against a small child. <laughs> um, but where do we need the most help? It's the offensive line. <clears throat> Creed and Trent Williams changes the game because that's pass coverage. I mean, it's pass protection and it's run run block. Um, our defense is in pretty good shape this season. We, statistically, we're doing pretty well. So I wouldn't spend the two the choice of C on the defensive side of the ball. If you went with Adrian Peterson, I mean, can he run with this line? I mean, he's my favorite running back in OU history. But I still don't think he could run with wow, that's, this that's poor of a line. That's another offseason or so, midweek podcast. I think topic, you have to but, go with the hmm. center. That's a controversial and the left statement tackle. you just made. Of course, it's not controversial who your favorite is. But right. It's controversial if that's a good. Favorite. How much would it change Texas's defensive scheme with Adrian Peterson lined up in the back? That's a great point. I think that's something you have to keep and in, take into account. Like, as as good as Brooks is, as good as the duo is, <laughs> we've had a lot better duos in the past 20 years, and we ha- we don't have anybody on that backfield right now that's like Adrian Peterson. Now, now you're not saying like he's been there all season and we've structured our offense around him. Just out of the blue, he gets inserted. That's right. And that would be one hell of a surprise <laughs> for Sark and, and, the, and the pagans of Texas. I don't know. What do you think, Connor? No, I think uh, in terms of need, it's absolutely offensive line. Um, I do like, I mean, it would be interesting to see a downhill running Adrian Peterson, mm. even with this line, with this because, with this offense, with the Lincoln Riley yeah. offense, and I think it, I think that just like a, the more pass protection would, I mean, it, it would open up things up downfield as well. So, like you said, it would immediately change the defensive scheme that Texas would have to run, yeah. and you in turn get Adrian Peterson plowing people over on top of mm. Spencer Rattler being able to get the ball down the field, hopefully. A so GT counter with Adrian Peterson. Uh, That'd be very strong. Man, no, wait, but but what GTs are we talking about? <laughs> well, just think about running two-back sets with Kennedy Brooks and Adrian Peterson. And having but we're not running two-back sets currently with Kennedy Brooks. We did a lot against K-State. And Eric Gray. Well, well not we're not adding the, the third the, running back of the group. Yeah. 
We're running you know, wishbone, the, baby. And it's Texas. There's no way they're going to well, run that point, you run, 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 it, run it gray out of the slot then, then which yeah. I guess you don't need about the slot. We have we better slot receivers. Yeah. 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 That, well, that's a pretty, like, Where's the back in the day formation? of Adrian Peterson, you had some very good receivers, but you didn't have the receiver combo probably that we have today. I don't Wasn't know, we, Adrian Peterson also notorious for not being a good blocker? I think he, yeah, I don't think you want to keep him in for pass protection. Yeah, I don't much. think that's the deal, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, just he's going to absorb just the ball. Get yeah. him out there; he's going to absorb a defender at least. They've yeah. got to respect Adrian Peterson with the ball, or the threat that he has the ball, the the threat that he's going to catch a pass. And I don't know that he always took the proper lane that he was supposed to take, anyways. So it's true, but it maybe didn't not being able to block real didn't well matter. wouldn't be that big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough time; it doesn't matter. That guy hit the hole so fast. If there was a hole, he hit it. Now. It'd be interesting to see the experiment with our offensive line that I think is coming along. I, you know, I don't want to. Eh, you don't think they're coming along? You shake your head. Nope, I don't. <laughs> what? I watched people just swim move past Andrew Rame all week last week. I'm saying, if you look at the last two drives against West Virginia, and several of the productive drives, especially in the second half against Kansas State, when they simplified it, that offensive line is doing better. Spencer at least had a pocket every night. He had a pocket. He completed a lot of passes. In West Virginia, there was someone within eight inches to. Two I'm not saying they're where we want them to be, right. but I'm saying they are getting better now. Even with them only getting better, would Adrian Peterson look like a pedestrian out there with this offensive line? Probably not against this Texas defense. And no, I don't think you could ever make Adrian Peterson look that way. But it would be interesting to see what that looked like. Plus, it's not like the old Pat Jones or any time in the history of Oklahoma State football where the running back gets the ball 47 times a game, right. you're probably not giving the ball to, the, to Peterson that often in this offense. Not with this offense. So, I, I don't know. Um, to counter what I think is the right answer, to p- play devil's advocate, I think the right answer is the offensive line choice, B. But, it's only two players among five. Are they, are they doing that much? To, to make it better, or do they just continue to run around the other three guys? Well, if it's if it is a center issue with blocking assignments, and Creed would have that that sewed up. Yeah, that could help. Very cerebral. Maybe that's what we're missing with. Yeah, with uh, Andrew Rain. Is this it is so crazy? Is this hypothetical completely unfair though? Because we introduced it with the idea that you're getting these guys in their prime. These these current players, you could say, "Well, hey, I'm not in my prime yet. G- give me at least to get to midseason." So maybe that's not or, or fair. At least until I'm a junior. But we're dreaming here. Yeah. I like I like the thought experiment a lot, and I like the idea. I think that's I think you want to help your greatest deficiency. You know, you don't want to just strengthen your your strength. If we were going against, shoot, if we we're going against a Lincoln Riley offense of 2017, 2018, you probably take a defensive player all day long because that's your only hope. Is you need as strong a defense as you can to shut that down. We are not going up against that against Texas. So we don't need that much help on defense. We just execute. We should be in good shape. That's what it comes down to, is the execution. That's where we've fallen short. I don't think there's any lack of talent on this defense. I think it's, man, let me look at last week. It's yeah. sheer execution. I wish I knew what they know about what was so disappointing to Grinch. He was so angry about who, I, I don't care who is not doing the, the job as much as what it is they're not doing. Yeah. What it is that, that he was seeing that one, he wanted them to do. I would imagine it was go after Skylar Thompson. I know, I just don't know enough about the specifics of the game or the specifics of their game plan, obviously, to know who wasn't performing in the way that he thought they should be performing and what they could have done. I think the D-line didn't win very many one-on-ones. Um, well, we st- we, like you guys were saying the other day at the game, it's, all the stunts the were stunts. completely unnecessary, yeah. which given Kansas State's line is a vet line. They're experienced. But our coaches should know that too, though. Right. They should be like, this isn't yeah. going to work with a line. That's not gonna, we're not going to confuse them right. to, to blocking the wrong gaps. Right. And, and to be a biased OU fan, we should be the bigger, stronger, better team to at least push those guys back enough to get that pressure that we need. Absolutely. Well, so. Riley said yesterday that none of the three levels on defense come away with a good grade. Yeah. He said defensive line, linebacker, secondary. He said yeah. none of those three units did their job. He said there were a couple of good performances by maybe an individual player here and there, hmm. but as a whole, none of those three hmm. – three guys didn't or yeah, those three it. levels it's interesting anything. so let's let's twist it a little bit and um, let's say that you can take any two players from OU history in their prime insert them into the game into the game plan the whole way for this game against Texas who would you take um, who wants to start us off 
Go for it, Steve. Yeah. All right, I'm going to throw you for a loop here. We're going to take, we're going to replace the coach. We're going to get Bud Wilkinson because he had a great record against Texas. And we're going to take Dale Royal because he was a great assistant coach under under Wilkinson. Okay. No. Um, I think you would be hard-pressed not to do something on the offensive line. And obviously there's a an entire history of great offensive linemen that you could choose from. That would be good. A duo at running back is pretty strong. We said Adrian Peterson, and that's obviously pretty strong. But I think if you got a, a dual back threat of two people – if you even just look back, not too far back, to uh, P. Ryan and Mixon, that's a pretty strong duo that could do a lot of a lot of damage. And I don't think there's any way you get um, a defensive line and a defensive scheme against us that is selling out so much against the quarterback if you've got those two guys at running back and the things they can do. Um, but then again, the offensive line has to at least protect for a little bit. So I don't know. You still might be stuck with just pick any two great linemen and put them into the mix, and that's pretty strong since that's our big deficiency. I mean, to me, you put Kyler Murray in there, even with a deficient offensive line. Who's your second thing? He's getting away. Is the second one on offense to compliment Murray, or do you need that? Do you go ahead and take Roy Williams? Um, We're going to take two strong players, one on offense, one on defense. Yeah, that sounds like the best way to go for me. I like that. I'd, I'd go Kyler because offensive line deficiencies are taken care of by his ability to scramble. Mm-hmm. I agree with um, that. Mm-hmm. I don't think our receiving core is as good as advertised this year. No, not yet. Definitely not So, yet. if you want to just score points. Hard to say because they haven't had a chance. Who's but. The, who could be the best receiver in OU history to, to go get the ball that Kyler's throwing? Uh, hard, hard to argue against CeeDee Lamb yeah, I recently. CeeDee Lamb. But, I mean. Ryan Broyles go, was yeah, fantastic. Ryan Broyles was totally fantastic. Yeah. What, Shepard uh, would be fine. Yeah. Body shape-wise, uh, Lamb is probably the best all around because – Royals was small. Yeah. Shepard is a little on the smaller side. Uh, Lamb. Help me. Who was number nine back in early Mark 2000s? Clayton. Mark Clayton. Mark he Clayton. He was the man. Going up and getting the ball, though. I mean, saved C. Lamb's children, probably right? did he the saved best children in a, in a Pulled him out of a car wreck. Mark Clayton did. I think you're correct about yeah. that. Highway 9? Yeah, Highway 9, yeah. Pulled him out of a car wreck? Some kids out of a, a like fire, burning car. Like, wow. Saved their lives. Um, hey, he had hit the car. but No, no, no. <laughs> so, no, I... Yeah, give give him a great target, but I think we've got good receivers. I don't know; it it might be. With I mean, his, Kyler probably makes them better. I, you you've got to think like, he does with his right. footwork, no matter what. I, Kyler knew how to throw people open too. Yeah, exactly. That's true, and he knew how to put it. And 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 we're talking his college prime, and still his college prime was Heisman Trophy <laughs> winning performances. Right. So if if you put him in in those situations, even if they, I don't know how this hypothetical works, but even if they don't know who Kyler Murray is. And then all of a sudden, they realize after the first quarter who he is. They've got to respect it and change the whole game yeah. plan. I'm, I'm, I'm on that same boat. I'm Kyler Murray, for sure. And then I want to compliment him with someone who could be efficient. And I was it was a toss-up between Mark Andrews and Jermaine Gresham. Mm. And I like I mm. like the Gresham pick because mm. you can run him out wide. Tight end. You can run him Where's Keith off Jackson? the line. Yeah, Keith Jackson. Very yeah, good blocker as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Great so, blocker. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think he gives you that's a couple really of different good. dimensions. He can help you in the run game, mm-hmm. setting an edge, and yeah. uh, so that's, I think that's who I go with. Jay, you got anything different? I'll try and be a little bit different. Um, I think Kyler Murray is probably the simplest pick. Just he's so dynamic. It's it would almost. It'd be incredible to be able to watch him in the system for longer than just one year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go defensive just to shut it down. Mm-hmm. No need to score 40 points if you're going to add two elite defenders. I might go with... Whew, I think you've got to have a linebacker that is going to stop help stop the slants, knows how to drop back into zone coverage, mm-hmm. and come up and make tackles. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Curtis Lofton mm-hmm. at linebacker. And, you know, the secondary doesn't have to block, or I'm sorry, cover as long mm-hmm. when you cannot block the defensive line. And I think if you add Tommy Harris, mm-hmm. With oh. Isaiah Thomas, oh my God, and Benito and well, Perion Winfrey. That's a good point. If you if you had somebody that amazing to an already great lineup, 
That's impossible to stop. You go Tommy Harris over Leroy Selman, though. I don't know about I that. didn't watch him play, so oh, I can't shit. I can't go. <laughs> I mean, I think you have to go Leroy Selman. How about Tommy Harris and Leroy Selman? <laughs> <There you laughs> <go. laughs> just live in the back. They would just be, do yeah, bubble yeah, screens. Yeah. All, Texas would just have to hike and in. And as long yeah. as we're doing that, as you, as you talk about defense, um, you got to go with the boss, who was yeah. phenomenal against Texas, hated Texas. He lived for this game. Uh, he true. was he was amazing. Okay, so here's a generational topic. Do you think that those guys were yes. as athletic enough yes. to work in these spread offenses? Absolutely they were. I don't think there's any doubt about it with those guys. I think there's guys at every era who could have done it if they had had the weight training and everything else that comes with it. But I think you could yeah, take... Yeah, but they didn't in, I mean, in this no, I know, scenario. Well, they didn't in the 50s, and they didn't have that training, but I, I think you could pluck Brian Bosworth from 1984, 1985 um, out of, so he was there in 85, 84, 85, 86. Yeah. You could pull him out and put him in today, and he'd be a, a Buckus finalist, no doubt about it. He was just that, just absolutely, absolutely tremendous. Um, Selman's too. I don't think there's, just those guys were just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal athletes. Country strong. Country strong. <laughs> The brothers that didn't get to play sports, as you read in Switzer's book, were better than the three that played. Oh, really? They were more athletic. <laughs> wow. And, but and they bigger, had to go to work because they were, I mean, they were dirt poor. <laughs> right. And, and so the, they were Oklahoma. bigger and, they, and, and more athletic. Wow. And who knows what, what the world could have been. Um, a di- very different world back then, obviously, in so many ways, poor and, and race issues and everything. But, no, I... I I think those guys could play today. I think they, they could play today. Like, right out of the gate could play today. Um, I think definitely if you go back only 20 years, you can find those players that could play today, no problem. So how about Derek Strait in the backfield, helping helping out a corner? Um, there's a lot of different guys who could contribute. Zach Sanchez was a Texas killer yeah. a couple times. That's right. Yeah, it, yeah it's interesting player guys. Guys. You can't pick Zach Stripping Sanchez. the ball. But it's fun to pick no, the guys who had, who had great We're talking performances about against game. Texas. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Kyler Murray, as great as he was, he lost his only OU Texas game. Right. Not all in his shoes. His only true OU Texas regular season game. Regular he, won, season he, he avenged the loss. Right. But, he avenged yeah. the loss. Yeah, that's that's a good point um, in this hypothetical. Uh, yeah. I I mean, if we're going to go strictly against OU, OU Texas games. Josh Heupel. Quentin Griffin has to be the running back. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had... Five and, Josh, and Josh Heupel, the quarterback. Six touchdowns in one game. Yeah, there you go. There we got him. <laughs> you also got Trey Brown running at quarterback. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Odin Sam Ellinger. Yeah. Uh, so who on the Texas side would you um, substitute if you could? So think back. This is kind of harder. But if you could come back to a player that you would replace a, a, a current player with, and I, what I'm going to get at is a, is a point here. To make, but if them, you could to go make back, them lose? To make them worse. Oh, Chris Sims, a quarterback. You think Chris Sims is worse than Chase Thompson? Chase Thompson? I don't know who Chase Thompson oh, is. Casey, Casey Thompson. Thompson. Casey Thompson. Chase is his alter Chris ego. Chris Sims is definitely worse than no, Casey no, Thompson. No. Major Applewhite. Major Applewhite was better than Chris Sims. I don't think Major Applewhite was. Oh, you're crazy. Player. Yeah, he I, was much better than Chris Sims. That actually, was that was probably the worst move Mac Brown ever made. Uh, you think, Sa- you think, Sa- Sambu Sal so is pretty bad. So that's you just scared me with that because <laughs> Swoops as bad as he was, he beat us. Yeah, and. That could happen, and that could happen with Thompson. And he's got Chris a lot Sims. of emotions to play for, a lot of weird torn emotions. But hometown kid, he's kind of avenging, avenging his father's situation and his brother's situation, and the fact that he wasn't offered. Um, I don't know. I, I, my point was going to be, Bijan's good, um, Thompson's good. There are a lot of players in the history of Texas football that are a hell of a lot better than these guys at these positions, and they're the only ones I know by name. Other than maybe a few, like if you gave me a multiple choice, I probably could name some others. This is not a great Texas team yet. Okay, flip it around. If we were Texas fans, who would we put on Texas? Well, team? we'd worship a, a cow. So let's let's get that on the. <laughs> yeah. out I mean, there. obviously, all Vince sorts of Young, the quarterback has to be. Yeah. I can't think in that mindset. You just said, right. why don't you lobotomize yourself? So if I was a Texas fan, and what's the question? Who would I? Who would I choose? Same thing. If you were a Texas fan, who would you replace Saturday with? All right. your all-time players. If you're an idiot, you'd say Ellinger. Um, <laughs> I think. Well, I don't know. If you're going to go with uh, success in this game, you'd say Peter Gardier, four zero against Oklahoma. Worst four years of my <laughs> life. Um, 
just absolutely terrifyingly bad. And I still have nightmares today. And he was better than Vince Young? Is that what you're telling us? Uh, apparently. <laughs> I mean, he won four this, times. In this game. I think was, he's the only, was, uh, only player in the, in the history of the, of the, of the rivalry, the I believe, yeah. to win four games. No, Vince Young. Shoot, Vince Young and Earl, Earl Campbell. Yep. And we're screwed. Yeah. Okay. How great would a <laughs> or Shipley? <laughs> how great would a Vince Young versus Kyler Murray Red River oh. shootout be? Oh, that'd be so epic. Whenever they come out with the new NCAA oh, football that's game, so cool. I think we need we need to uh, pull that we'll off. Send that up. Yeah. Yeah. Send it up. Man, that would be that would be pretty amazing. I. I so it, I don't know. So where's their deficiency? I don't know. Vince though? Young's first game. On, what was the final of that? Oh, game? we kicked his butt. Twelve to no, Twelve we, nothing or something. We, well, we mind screwed him. Um, I guess we're explicit. We mind fucked him because we came in from the corner. Mike Stoops was awesome against it. He just had that cornerback. He goes, just just leave your receiver and run at Vince Young, and he won't know what to do. And sure enough, he didn't know what to do. Vince Young was so stupid. He was so stupid, <laughs> he was and he so just stupid. killed him every time. But then their talent level uh, got up. He got just good enough to figure out what to do to beat us. Plus, we were down a little bit. Um, I don't know. Where's their deficiency this year? Defensively, offensive, offensive line, line and everywhere on the defense. I think. So they'd probably choose two offensive linemen that we probably I can't name. I don't know the great they haven't offensive had many. linemen. Um, <laughs> defense, the they could get Stony uh, Stony Clark, who for the ESPN Casey had the Hampton. greatest um, play in Texas OU history. He'd be a good <laughs> defensive lineman to help out. Um, Manuel Acho was defensive, wasn't he? Yep. Um, what was that really, really good defense, the cornerback that they had? Like um, Nathan Basher or that, somebody? Yeah, yeah well, except he was the one who fielded Basher, the punt. Yeah. Vaccaro was pretty good at safety. Derek, he fielded the punt that Derek created Johnson Superman play. Really Greatest really good linebacker. Was good Roy yeah. Williams was a good uh, cornerback. Roy Williams was good. No, he was a receiver for them. Yeah, yes, the was. other Roy Williams. He was. Yeah, sorry. yeah, the Roy Williams. Thank you. He was excellent. Um, he was good. So they we shut his ass down. Though. They've got a lot of those guys that are. Who's the family? Uh, the Shipleys. Shipleys. Yeah, the Shipleys. Yeah, I'm glad to not see any more. Well, Shipleys. and and the uh, the the twin brothers. They're the ones who caught the ball back to back years to beat us in the last seconds with Peter Gardier throwing the ball on last second drives <laughs> against us, against the same damn defensive back at OU. Um, I blocked it out of my memory, but that that was painful. Those two guys were pretty good. Um, those were bad teams, though. What was the That's kid with, what's the, what's the, kid with the braids name? What was his name? <laughs> oh, the, the the linebacker. Yeah, yeah. Who who uh, th- deleted his, his Twitter account? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you both last year. Oh, uh, he lives years. in Belgium now. He's a no he, way. He got a sex change. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, yeah he I don't know what his deal it. is. Yeah, he's. Oh, what was his name? Different guy. Uh, it doesn't matter. He's a loser. I don't know, but I just remember watching the highlights of him just getting bullied. Just all Cody over. Ford oh, literally yeah. took just... his soul from his body. Well, honestly, and what Samia, was bad about I think him Samia is Samia did too. Come he on. had a giant mouth on him that he couldn't back up, and and he put his team in a weird position with the things he said. Big Twelve championship, he got obliterated. He totally times. got obliterated. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to have a you know a boisterous um, demeanor and attitude, but. He himself couldn't live up to it. Yeah, and he was took himself too seriously as a result, and that's why he can't you know deleted his Twitter account after saying stuff. Said he wasn't going to cut Brecken, his hair. Brecken Hager. Yes. Yeah. Brecken, Brecken Hager said, "I'm never going. I'm not cutting my hair until I win a Big Twelve title." Yeah, <laughs> Bitch. <Never. laughs> yeah. He's going to like somebody he's, from ZZ Top. He's going to be. <laughs> he's going to the SEC now too. So. Yeah. Uh, so. Your last chance. That's <laughs> that's interesting. So, Sark is the coach of Texas. Let's make some predictions. How long is old Sark going to last? I, I think Sark probably gives it a, a longer run than Herman and So, Strong. so Herman was there uh, four years. Four years was it four? Four. Seventeen. And then, and then was Strong was only three. Strong was a good man. I don't know. If Strong he was got a good screwed coach. by his boosters, though. Yeah, it, it, and that's legendary. The Texas boosters are apparently really tough, but I don't know. They demand a lot. The guy wasn't winning, so wasn't? I, I don't know if I could totally fault them. I don't know. They sound like they're irrational, crazy people, but they worship a cow. I don't know what to say. It's not like he's doing um, anything spectacular. Matt Brown lasted a, a, an exceptionally long amount of time, and I think it's because he did so well with the boosters and, and all the supporting infrastructure. You know, Coach Coach February, always number one in the, in the recruiting all those years. Um, it's a small sample size. Sark seems like he has this team playing better than they did last year. And on paper, 
his coaching staff that he surrounded himself with comes with a lot of clout. So yeah, um, true. I don't know if Sark's a head coach though. I agree. I mean, we we saw the implosion that was Steve Sarkeesian at USC, where right. he got around money and and then top alcohol. five recruits. Where was he right before that? He was Washington. He was at Washington. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty successful so, at Washington. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty well. successful, but I don't know if successful Washington, enough to I don't know earn what that means, you know? five steps up to USC. And, and and just totally imploded. A lot of that, you know, drug and alcohol related, um, but also that's part of who he is. I don't know. Or or was. Was, yeah. So I, I think he's probably got a good mind for coaching, but agreed. I don't know if he can be that head coach. That's a Other that's than a Kirby kind of Smart, animal. has anyone off that Saban staff? really done a whole lot i guess i guess jimbo fisher counts yeah but i mean he's kind of like how far removed from kiffin is he actually where he just floats around and does pretty good but does he actually produce yeah, he had the one year at florida state i mean that he yeah one or two years in the florida acc state well in so the ACC. asterisk that yeah. um with even, a quarterback who is dumber shoot, than a box of rocks Kirby's but freakishly smart. good at throwing the I football mean, this could be kirby's teams. year this year it could be, it, and and Georgia's obviously has been really strong, but the SEC's been on a downtrend for the last ten years. Don't tell ESPN, but they have been. Um, other than one, program. other than and one so, program, yeah, yeah, right, exactly, and that's what I mean by that. And so, you know, Georgia, that's the success story. That's interesting. Equally, how many coaches emerged from the Bob Stoops regime that we can say Lincoln Riley? That's it. I mean, Mark Mangino I think did pretty Mangino. well at Kansas. Mangino did well for oh, a couple Kansas. of years. They, yeah, they went to the Orange Bowl. Right, That's yeah. a big turnaround. They had yeah, a that's... year. They had one great year. You could almost... In a down year for the Big 12. I, mean, now, Lee, I, mean, I don't know if you can claim Leach for just the one year he was here. How many people in the history of football remember Mark Mangino, right? And so he's not yeah. he's not a legendary coach. So Chuck Long burned out. Um, Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson's Wilson. had, had a, a couple very good years career. Not as a head coach, really, as much as an offensive coordinator. Did really well at, at Ohio Sumlin. State. Yeah, yeah. Sumlin burned out. Um, it's and it's tough. Coaching is tough. Um, that's interesting, though. And it's not like Hayden Fry and the, and the, and everybody that that emerged out of that. Uh, Frank Broyles and everybody that came from that coaching tree. Bill Snyder had a tree. Um, Bill Snyder had a tree that that overlaps somewhat with the Broyles <laughs> one. Yeah, um, and the Hayden Fry. Well, and the, and the Hayden Fry one. And then and you can even then say Switzer as well, even though he's coming off of the Royals one. You can say Wilkinson and the, and the people he produced. It was going to be interesting with Lincoln and his tree is that with him being the basically the offensive coordinator and play caller, typically that's the position that moves on to take a head coaching job. Right. So, I mean... It doesn't seem more like Phil Gundy yeah, is going to leave. Exactly. He nope. seems like a lifer. Yeah, he's not going to leave. I at don't this think Beanbow. I think he's the longest running. No, Beanbow's not going to go anywhere. You got you got Beamer. Beamer is fifty fifty at best to become a successful head coach. He's at South Carolina, which is another perennial SEC team that is so much worse than their fans give him credit for. So he's. I don't think Dennis Simmons is no a head coach. I never hear his name like up it. for anything. Murray will stick around for a bit. You mentioned Cal Gundy. Um, as a side note, I had tweeted back in the spring, I think, at, at Mosier. We had talked about it that um, I think he's the longest-serving coach in the history of OU football. Um, I can't imagine anyone else who's been associated with a program that long. Merv Johnson. So you go back. Um, yeah, different but not aspects. as a, different aspects. Yeah. yeah, different aspects. But as truly a coach, I think he's the longest-serving uh, um one and so yeah, I mean, he's, he's up there at the least. Yeah, he came in with Stoops, and and yes, exactly. And you know, and and of course was a player a few years right. before that. So that's pretty awesome, pretty impressive there. Um, that's interesting. I like that. I like that as a role model for coaches that are great. You don't have to go be a head coach. You don't have to go get washed up somewhere. Or I, I guess it depends on what you want. Seth Luttrell, he's still at North Texas, right? Yeah, he's doing okay. Yeah, that's real. He's okay. I mean, you, I can, mean, you can say yeah. Venables is kind of in the coaching tree with he's him. He's probably he, the best. He came he's up with K-State Snyder. for them. Yeah. and yeah. Snyder. Snyder and definitely Stoops. So. He's obviously not a head coach, but he's performed Is he the well. most successful coach, no, coach out of this out of the Stoops tree? I would say so. 
Yeah, Probably Mike's bounced sense. around. Those defenses that, yeah. that Venables has built at Clemson and yeah. even over the past, you know, seven years. Oh, he'll be venerated as one of the, the great defensive coordinators of, of all time. And you look at he was associated with two programs at the elite top level of defense. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually hope Grinch is following that same model. I do too. I'm going to make two and a half million yeah. dollars a year and be associated not with have winning, the headaches not and have just, the responsibility yeah. of having to and all the risk. I mean, honestly, if you assess the risk, which they're never good at doing, you look at the fact that head coaches wash up and there's so much randomness in it. I mean, you're get think about why you're getting that job. They weren't successful. The guy got fired. It wasn't because he got fired because he had a hundred. Unless you're Mac Brown, and even then he didn't get fired until after. This was not the fact. You didn't get five-star athletes at every position, and you got fired. You, the house was on fire. That's and what's so crazy about that transition. You got to go into that. So wild that we had We're a so lucky. We had a, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> angelic transition between it was a coaching great with divine intervention. Very, yeah, it's just <laughs> and then like here I'm <laughs> handing this off to Bob retired on be my more birthday, successful. and I'll never forgive him. <laughs> and it was the best thing that could have happened. I don't know about the best thing that could have happened. What is the what's it was better? A great what is be, what is better? What's better? Not retiring on my birthday. No. <laughs> <laughs> the day after. <laughs> yeah, enough, the day after would have been totally different. I don't right, think I would if I could undo anything about it, I don't think I'd keep stoops <laughs> another year. I would have liked to have gotten rid of Mike a year earlier. I would have liked to if, have taken his brother with him. If there's <laughs> any way that could have happened, yeah. that would have been good. As far as we know, that was it. But you know, yeah, it would have been nice to done that to have done that on the back end of the Georgia game, as opposed to mid season after yeah. a Texas loss. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. If you, you probably don't get Alex Grinch in that. I mean, I don't know. Who right. You I don't know what the. It's silly to play well, what but, if but, and hypotheticals, but, but you know. Then again, I think very highly of Alex Grinch, but yeah. there are lots there's of defenses out there doing. There's, that. there's lots of there. guys out there. Yeah, yeah. you've always For got sure. to look how to reload. But I like I like Alex Grinch. I like your theory, Jay, of let's keep him here. I think that guys should look at the situation and say, hey, I, like I think Venables has done, I don't have to be a head coach to be super rich, super successful, and super happy. And think as much, mad think as they get at happier. me, think how much happier. they're not going to get rid of me. I'm not going to get the angry letters like Dabo gets or any of those guys get when they happen to lose a game. I think it's a good model. The angry Dabo letter. <laughs> yeah, it's so insane. Joke. Totally insane. Well, anything else before we wrap it up for the first midweek pod? Anything else to add about this game? Let's do you want to make some pre- predictions? predictions. Yeah, let's, let's make some predictions. predictions. Wait, let's go ahead and get our predictions in. Let's get our score predictions. So in. let's let's let it be noted we we did we did some high level predictions on Sunday on the post game. Right. I think we had. I know we had at least two wins for OU. Three wins? No, or? no, I had a loss. Yeah, two, two losses. wins and two losses. Yeah. Okay, so I start off extremely pessimistic. Well, where are we today, Jay? Week? Are you are you ready? Are you guys ready to give your scores? I'm, I'm ready not, to give I, my score. I'm not, but I will. I will be. Ready. I have not thought of my score, but I am feeling. You want to take a second? I'm we can take. It. We can always cut out some time if you need to take a no. second to think. So I'm a pretty big fan of. Well, don't don't bias this guy because he's trying to see how we can get negative points. <laughs> Lucas thinks we're going to get negative eight points. <laughs> I'm a fan of um, advanced statistics, and looking here, uh, I'll give credit to. Is that uh, a site or is that what? Yeah, Adam, Adam, Adam McClintock? You Billy Bullshit. Bean, like was this Moneyball you're doing here? Yes, uh, that worked out. <laughs> it did for the Red Sox. It sure as hell did. <laughs> yeah, it did. Absolutely, it did. <laughs> so according to Adam McClintock Changed on all baseball. Twitter, and I think they're part of the football matrix. Him and Barto. I don't know. Um, anyways, they have an algorithm that's they do pretty well with that's their a big word now. Their guesses, their their predictions for games and uh-huh. efficiencies and. So, do you have a prediction, or do you or are you just going to yeah, repeat just, somebody else's? No, 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 He's no. It's not a prediction. I'm saying after reading this, I actually felt quite a bit better because I think Sooner fans will be surprised yeah, when they hear this. Some surprises. So, according to Adam McClintock, the Sooners' offense has played against the 40th best defensive schedule so far this season. And our def- okay. this is, this is even right. more surprising. Our defense has played against the 27th best offensive schedule. Okay. Which I felt. The Nebraska, West Virginia, Tulane juggernauts. I know it doesn't seem like it, but, you know, these guys are pretty spot on. They really are. Yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not making this up. They're not going by I name. Mean, yeah, 90% they could be wrong. of math is made up, including the 90%. 90% of math is made up. Okay. <laughs> 
And so in, uh, on the, the other token, the other side of this, okay, the offense that has looked so good this season from Texas that everyone's kind of worried about how they've, you know, Casey Thomas has taken over and they look so much better. They are uh, f- fifth in scoring, which is good. Uh, the Texas defense efficiency is 57th. So, I mean, that's not as, you know, that's not as strong as I would think. But Texas's offense has played the 97th ranked defensive schedule. That's, compared, that's compared really to our impressive. That's very, to that's, in, that's very impactful there. We 97. Have, yes. Huh. We've played against the 27th ranked offensive schedule. So, hmm. I don't know. Like I said, advanced statistics, if you're into that kind of thing. And that'll help our stats now because Texas is, what, the fifth rated, fifth rated offense right now? Inefficiency, yeah. Hmm. And What's your prediction? Okay, I'm going to go with, on the spot, I'm going to go, uh, I'll, I will go. This should not be gun to our head picks for our weekly picks either. This should be subject to a two-day grace period as well. <laughs> okay. Two-day? Well, we sent them out on Thursday. So. Till Friday. Well, we, we do when you get yours in, but oh. you get yours in Friday morning. Everything so. should okay. still be confidential, but. Oh, we're not gonna put. We're not gonna say them right now. No, no, no. We should say. We should say what our Wednesday, our Wednesday night predictions are. I'm just saying for in for the purpose oh, okay. of our picks. So our our true money picks. That our we money. Do. Our true money picks. This okay. could be subject to change. Okay. Okay. Subject to change. I'm like not that. changing like mine. That. I'm more worried about them changing theirs. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I haven't thought about this game all week. Like. I haven't either. I haven't thought about this. I've run all my now. analytics. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Steve has is, Steve is <laughs> simulated 96 scenarios. And guess how many times OU wins? 47 <laughs> million times. Because math is real. Place. <laughs> okay, Jay, sorry. I'll go, I'll go, um, I'll go 34 30. Ooh, okay. Uh, wait, wait. Did you switch to OU or OU? Oh, okay. okay. Oh, we cover. Right. He said at 10 58 is the Interesting. Feel so good two, about OU. two field goals. Yeah, I'm, I'll feel even better, I think, at okay. ten fifty eight Saturday. I might go with more like a fourteen point. Circle victory. back. What's the What's the realist say? Y'all circle back. To he, me. he wants. Oh, to, circle back. All right, I'm I'm going forty one forty one twenty seven. He already sent it to me. Forty one twenty seven. Lock it. Lock, Lock the it score. I was about to say that. That's that's probably what my huh. Saturday morning. He's score close, was. but he's not quite there. Forty five twenty four. Sooners. I like it. I'm going to go 28-27 Texas. <laughs> oh! Because oh, worst we have shown ever. that we like to kick field goals and that's going to be our from doom. 50 yards. And I think we should have scored on one of those drives and we're going to have two field goals and that will be the difference in the game. Wow. Three touchdowns, two field goals. To and four, Nolan gets against his, four touchdowns. His, his, a loss at his so first. So twenty eight twenty four. You said no, twenty eight twenty seven. Twenty eight twenty seven. Okay. That would, be, that, would that would be that would be devastating. That would be devastating. And we will all second guess why we decided to kick a field goal from the forty eight thirty two yard line, yard line <laughs> on a fourth and four yeah. instead of going for it in the third quarter. Yeah. If we do that, I'll definitely second guess that. Oh, uh, there'll be some off. second guessing for sure. Oh, Lincoln shit. tightens up in this game. He does tighten up. Lincoln tightens point. up in a lot of games. Lincoln tightens up bad in this game. Yeah. Yeah, you you won't see the player rotation that you've seen all season long, for sure. You'll see some changes there. So as a first-time coach in this game, do you think Sark just lets it fly and plays loose? Yes. Or does he feel extra pressure? No, I think Sark's an aggressor in this game, for sure. I think you have to be. I think First-year he... Texas head coaches have a good history against OU, as I pointed out the last podcast. Yeah, we, I, I think that's still under debate. <laughs> Well, the last, Somebody the last, the that. last Texas coach to win in his first OU Texas game was Mac Brown, Tom Herman. No, Tom Herman lost in two thousand seventeen. Tom Herman lost in twenty seventeen. Charlie Strong lost. He was Charlie lost, Strong lost, lost, win. Hmm. Mac Brown is the last Texas coach to win in his first, and that was against a bad OU. You sure team. about that? I'm off. So nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm quite sure. Who was the coach in '97? Was that Fred? Last years of Fred Akers, or was that? Or I'm thinking that he was in the '80s. Makovic, yes. Oh God, that clown. Yeah. Yeah, Fred Akers was in the '80s. Herman then, lost in '17. And Strong lost in what? '14. He lost the first two. He was two and Strong three. Strong lost in '14. Or one and two. Yeah, okay. Strong lost in '14 and '15. 
No, Strong won in 15, so... I guess I had my years shifted. Well, we should look this up rather than speculate here. I've, I've got it. Yeah, blindly. for, our, lis- for oh. our listeners real quick. The listeners are screaming. Sorry, guys. We are smarter than this. So, <clears throat> excuse so, me. So look that up, and as we're thinking, as you're looking that up, what is your logic again? You were going to give your lose? pick next. I did. What was your What was your total? My total forty five forty five twenty four forty five twenty four. Okay. Yeah. No, Sooner's all the way, baby. Sooner's by three. What touchdowns. was my logic? My logic is we kick a lot of field goals. My logic is we kick one field goal and the rest of them are touchdowns. All right, what are your quick keys? We're going to be game. up. We're going to be quick, up. What's your three zero at the end of the first quarter? What's your cliff and notes then we're keys run to the game? Um, run the damn ball. Run the ball effectively. Run the ball a lot. Maybe flip the um, run pass ratio that OU has done so far this year. So instead of forty percent run, you're sixty percent run. Um. Get them off the field. Less defensive line stunts. Yeah. Just that just get nice. to the quarterback. Uh, don't give him a time to do anything. Um, do we need a spy on Casey Thompson? I, either you need a spy or you blitz it so it doesn't matter. He's not going to burn you deep. He's not going to know what to do. They can't throw the ball deep. You don't give him enough time. You, I want max aggression against a guy like this. What does his, I always want max What is his relationship to OU fair. as far as his father playing at OU, his brother coming to OU and transferring away? How much emotion against OU does it hurt Casey Thompson to have? I think it probably, if it all it hurts him, I don't think it's a lot. I think it probably gives him a little bit of baggage. He's been on that bench for, what, two years now? Three years? Oh, is it that long? He's been on there for a couple I didn't years at least. That. Yeah, behind Ellinger. I, I, he's been he's been in this atmosphere. God, there's a reason for stadium. that, guys. Jeez. I don't know. He didn't win the starting job coming into Tom, the season. Tom no. Herman and Sam Ellinger had some weird crap going on between those True. two those two guys. That was a very loyalistic, like golden boy type of thing. And shit, like we saw in the in the game against uh, Colorado, the bowl game against Colorado, like. I'm not saying Ellinger's not going to throw for a bunch of yards in that game, but Casey Thompson more than likely sh- he showed Ellinger up in that game and made a statement. Yep. So, but I mean, it, it's different when you got the ball in your hands the first snap, right? So, right. We'll see how that plays out. I'm it's, I'm yeah. super excited. So it's a, it's I, a I fun think, storyline. I think it could be some. I think it's baggage in preparation. I don't know if it's a lot of baggage in the game, unless it gets into a tight situation, and somehow he looks up at the crowd and thinks OU Texas, and he starts just. Psyching himself out. I don't know if that really ends up mattering a lot. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, That's going to be I, so fun. I don't know. I, I think that OU has probably brings some arrogance into the game, but they also bring some swagger. And the Texas fans and the Texas players have to be a little bit concerned about the fact that they are um, an underwhelming team historically recently against Oklahoma. So I think that can catch up with you really fast. They're used to losing this game. We're used to winning it. We've got to have something tone, to that. Yeah, we have to have a tone setter. I think. I mean, if we, we've seen so many times, and I, I know we've mentioned it. I've mentioned it on Sunday as well. We've we've you got to set that tone in those first couple drives, and that starts up front. In my opinion, we've started that. We've started that momentum up front, up front especially both, both sides of on the ball. both sides, but and especially defensively. Though you get someone in the backfield one of a couple times in those first couple drives. Make them uncomfortable. Show that B. John Robinson isn't going to be running all over us all day. Yeah. Man, that game. If you can figure out. So, here's a key to the game that you asked, Jay, that I I don't know exactly. This is kind of a, a generalist uh, or maybe a catch-all. But if you can take away whatever their key to the game is, then you're in great shape. Whatever they're trying to do, if you can counter it, we're in great shape because we're the better team. So, if their key is they got to get B. John out in space and you can stop that, that's that may be it. They're kind of a one-trick pony, and they may be a one-trick pony on defense too, trying to stop us. If they can't get to the quarterback and put pressure, it's it's over. What I don't do think, think they create a lot of pressure at good. all. Yeah, I don't think they're very good at. It. We haven't been very good at keeping the pressure off. Right. But there was a, I don't, a, a troop of Girl Scouts that tank, tackled Spencer Rattler earlier. I do the not season. think they're we even missed. remotely close to the. West Virginia. Are they going to run a three-man front like we've seen all they season? They run a two-four-five. They only have two true defensive linemen and bringing guys off the edge. Hybrid 
edge guys like Benito. You could say he's an edge guy. He's a linebacker. They run a two four five. It's very strange. How do you not run all over that? I think Arkansas did. I guess that's what they did. Yeah. Wow. I mean, to me, that is you've got to guess so right to stop that. Otherwise, it's a two three yard gain you're conceding, right? Um, even if you come up and run support every time, and then if you do that too many times, boy, those those DBs are setting themselves up to get burned. I mean, if yeah, you I knock over one defender on, yeah. like you're saying, if you're conceding two to three yards on everything, you run over one defender for an extra two yards, and it's it's open second and five. Yeah, They're very bend but don't break style, which seems to be the new, which is the very new fangled thing. Bad for against to run OU, now. who's got great efficiency in the red zone. What what is Rattler number one in the red zone oh, this year? He's, in the red he's zone amazing. Silly. What, very, for very whatever good. it's worth, it's a small sample size against you know limited opponents. I I totally get that, but we are we're not bad in the red zone. We're exceptionally good as far as we can tell in the red zone. Mm-hmm. Maybe better in the red zone than we are anywhere else on the field. So that could be bad for them if it's a bend don't break. Yeah, it probably comes down to what it usually does and who wins the trenches on both sides. Mm-hmm. I mean. I, our defensive line should be able, with just our four, to create enough pressure that we're not having to bring linebackers, we're not having to bring corners. Um, I just don't want to hear that damn cannon go off. That's all I want. Cannon, that stupid dude. cannon Shit. that they fire in that in that horrible steer's ear. How is that not animal abuse? You oh, fire in a cannon. Bringing that animal into a stadium like that is next to that drug up steer. It's abuse. so messed up. It's way different than bringing two small it. horses in running around on the field. Those ponies love to run. They love ponies it. love to run. They like loud noises. It's they all, love it's it. They very, love it all. They're not firing a gun right in their ear. No. The roughnecks are they're very not. good about not getting anywhere near them. No, oh, they're yeah. very far away from them. That I've cannon, seen, that cannon. I've yeah. seen ear muffle things go on those ponies' ears. Yeah, they, they do they do special things for them. No, I think I think we, if we can win the turnover battle and not do stupid things with the football. Turnovers are going to be very we've seen important. just dumb stuff happen because we are dumb is with the football. Is this the game where Spencer is is running with the ball loose like he does and, and it gets stripped away? I've seen so many OU Texas games turn on a on a fumble. Yep. Most of them against us, a couple of them for us, but man, oh that would be bad. That that's what I worry about. I think we're the better team. I'm worried about us shooting ourselves in the foot. I'm worried about us having a, a sixty yard drive that stalls out. Ends in a turnover, ends in a fourth and two that we don't pick up. Or go or, for it. Or just or just um we'll go for it and don't pick it up. Yeah. But or don't go for it and kick a field yeah. goal and settle for three and they're getting seven. Kind of your nightmare. So I think all of those things are real, but I think we're the better team. Do you think we're the better team, Lucas? I haven't watched Texas play enough to decide. I think we're a good team. I don't think we're a great team. You don't think – I mean, if you had to guess, no, I don't you think don't think we're great. better? No, no, no. Better than Texas? Um, can the rankings be that wrong? Yeah, they can be that wrong. So we're maybe a, only a 20th ranked team? I mean, this is a pick em to me. Yeah, not to the math, but that's made up. Yeah. So I mean, so cool where do we go? The, we, I mean, rankings are just rankings. Uh, rankings uh, matter. Iowa State was the top ten team when the season started, and where are they now? They're non-existent. Sure, there's a lot of volatility in rankings, but there's some there's there's something to be believed about them, right? I mean, Kansas is not a top twenty-five team. So how much do the rankings change with? And they're just playing devil's advocate for everything. How how much do the rankings change with a neutral site? Uh, split crowd, you know. Yeah, neutral just, as you can get. Yeah, all the intangibles that you kind of throw in there. Plus the emotions of this plus, game. Yeah, plus the just the general. I would think the emotions favor OU. You'd have of, to think so. Uh, maturity, experience, recent experience, having won. You got more to prove um, than, than Texas does, in my opinion. In yeah. This game. More to lose. More to lose, but, but more, to, more to prove. More to prove. I think the rankings probably shrink a little bit, and that, and and not necessarily OU being lower ranked, but but the rankings kind of just moving towards each other, and towards more towards the middle. We've got our goals in front of us, and our goals are to win everything. Yep. They've got beat OU. theoretically everything in front of them, but honestly, they can't think that they're yeah. a real contender. No, it's beat OU they to get to the Big Twelve. They title could game. think maybe they're getting to the Big Twelve title game with a chance to win. We're disappointed in anything short of a Big Twelve title victory. Yep. So, 
this season we're disappointed in anything less than an undefeated regular season. Absolutely. In my opinion. Oh, this is definitely a, a, a season you're disappointed with. That's why you're already disappointed because you see how close we've been to losing. You're disappointed with anything short of a victory in every game and being obviously then therefore a contender for everything. Yep. Um, now, we could end the season and we're, we're satisfied with where it went knowing that we were we had a chance but we things didn't get there. There's a good chance that we're at the end of the season and we're just frustrated that this team probably had every element or reason to believe they could win it all and just doesn't. Drastically and, and stopped, underperformed, underwhelms. But we're not going to. We're going to win. We're going to beat Texas. We're going to turn it all around. You're going to even be a believer. Your son's, gonna, your son's going to be there first time. First time there. You know, Steve's at least going to be there first time. Uh, uh, at least, yeah, yeah, at least the youngest. Yeah, I thought you said Steve's going to be there the first time. Steve's daughter. Yeah, at least she's going, going to be there. there. The it's her time. first, so it'll be. I don't remember what it is for Ava and Max. Um, they've both been there quite a few times, but it's we'll at least his first tenth, game. She doesn't know what she's in for. Texas doesn't know what to expect. I'm going to turn Elise loose on Texas and going to rip them apart. Yeah. So we got a lot of people getting their first. Take the muzzles get off. Get your corn dog. Get your Fletcher's corn dog. Get your. Get your. Get there for that 11 Get your coupons. Get, yeah, get your, get your coupons. Some I, wax I cup, actually put wax my, beers. my coupons <laughs> that, I've, that I have left over from two years ago because they didn't need coupons in COVID because, you know, COVID yeah. and coupons don't go together. Have them up there ready to go with yep, my go we've bag. Got ours out. I want to use them up and not carry forward any more damn coupons. I want them to go to an electronic system or something. I'm, I'm ready sure I'll for get this. plenty of texts uh, asking what does the replay look like. What is what is the? You are our man on the. Uh, yeah, our man yeah, on the you outside be ready. Review. You be ready. You're you, the man no, on the outside. No, no, no. You need to anticipate that. Yeah. You need to know when we like. You need to say, oh, obviously they're going to want to know sure. this. Boom, boom, boom. Fire it. I want to see you first because I've got other friends that do this. Got a uh, shout out to Nate and Ray. They're out there. Shout out to a lot of different people that text me with the different stuff, Eric and, and JT. I need to see you, Jay. You're the man. You got one job Saturday, one job. You get back to us before we get to you and say, what are we looking at here? Did he get the first down? Is it a fumble? Um, did, did he we, double touch it on the onside did kick? Did he double touch the onside kick? There are no onside kicks. There are no kicks onside kicks in this game. Because we're winning so bad, and they're just trying to pack the bus <laughs> and get the hell back to Austin. How many onside kicks have we had to defend this season? God, uh, four. At least four. <laughs> four, it's true. Two against Kansas State. <laughs> What's the most in OU history? <sighs> At least four. Uh, two, uh, yeah. No, three against K-State. One, they no. just completely screwed up. That's more than I can no. remember. I mean, two against K-State. No, three. Remember the one that they all jumped off sides on? The kickers confused their team worse than what they could. What no, they I did? think that was one of the three attempts at the last onside kick. No, I promise they had they they, they threw they threw the offside. We got the ball in like the forty-five yard line or something something like that. I think that was. Were there three? There were three. I pro- so there was the first one that was double touched. They kicked another one, which the kickers. One went one way, the other one went the other, yeah. and then like all the whole oh, line yeah. jumped off sides. Jumped off sides. And then the last one, which had like three iterations. Yeah. God, yeah. you're right. Plus Nebraska, plus, plus Tulane. Two lane. Five. Five on kicks. West Virginia never did? I don't think so. No, huh? I can't. I... They should have. <laughs> <laughs> five out of five games. Five games. <laughs> Since the Stoops era, that's 21 that's probably points by over far four the games most. is the difference. I, I can't. I can't remember. A well, one per game on average. Yeah, that's definitely twenty-one the most. points over four They've games been... is our victory. Is our margin of victory, not counting the FCS games. No, they've been close games. I haven't noticed twenty-one points. Yeah, fellas. my stomach hasn't noticed either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. My throwing my, up blood. Did every you night. see that vein come out of my forehead <laughs> when Lincoln didn't put anybody deep on that last onside see, kick? Like oh um, boy. We're going to no. win. We're going to win, baby. We're 5-0. Boomer Sooner. Beat Texas. Beat Texas. Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner.